Hey, this is Ian from EssentialTennis.com. Welcome to this video where Kevin, Megan, and myself are going to show you three tips to really maximize your forehand topspin. Help you get more shape, more curve, more jump off the court on the other side. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the swing path. If you don't have this correct, then everything else we're gonna talk about really is kind of irrelevant. And really the topic at hand here is what the racket is doing before contact, at contact, and after contact. And there's this old cliche phrase of swing low to high for topspin. And I'm not a fan of that phrase because it doesn't give enough detail. What I mean by that is it's more than possible, and I, there's many of you watching this video right now that do swing low to high, but you struggle making any significant amount of rotation. You're still driving the ball. And the reason why is your racket isn't dropping low enough before contact. You can swing from a, a low starting point, finish at a high, fin at a high follow through position and still drive the ball if the ball if the ball's position at contact isn't any higher than the lowest part of your swing. In other words, if you make contact at waist height, but your racket never dropped below waist height in the first place, then the forward motion up to contact, which is really what matters and what tells the ball what to do, is a lateral swing. And I see students all the time, when we work with private students, they'll finish in an over-the-shoulder position, or maybe even higher than that, extended up over their shoulder, but they're still driving the ball. And they say, Ian, I, I, I can't make any topspin. Everything I hit is super flat. And it's because their racket doesn't drop any lower than the point of contact. So it's not about low to high, it's about lower than contact and higher than contact. We need to be more specific. There's three ways that you can accomplish that. Way number one is by dropping your arm as a whole. Way number two is by using your legs, your knees. Way number three is by using your hand to drop the racket head. And sometimes you'll see professional players use all three uh, and use their legs, drop their arm and drop their hand on a really low ball to really get the racket head down below the ball. Uh, say they're trying to make contact on a low short ball at, at knee height. And so they'll actively use all three to drop the racket head and still create a ton of spin, even though, even though the ball is just barely up off the ground. So just remember, it's not about low to high, it's about lower than contact and higher than contact. And the more height difference there is between contact and the bottom of your swing, the more potential you have to create topspin. Now it's time to talk about your kinetic chain and how by having an efficient kinetic chain, it create more topspin for your forehand. One of the biggest mistakes most players make is when they're trying to create topspin, they're just muscling the ball with their arm. So meaning that there's really stiff here, they're swinging really hard, and they're producing some sort of topspin, but not a lot. Not the kind of topspin you see on the pros, where they gracefully swing, it's really easy, really smooth, and you see the ball come off the racket with a lot of topspin with very little effort. What you're not seeing is the kinetic chain. And what that is is a sequence of events that has to happen, meaning pushing off the ground, up through the legs, to the hips, to the shoulders, and then the energy travels to the arm and then the racket. That is the correct sequence for the kinetic chain. So right now I'm gonna show you how to work on your kinetic chain. So again, most players muscle the ball and you can really see how just one muscle group of my arm is you, I'm using to swing the racket. What you want with the kinetic chain is that I'm gonna push down on the ground and as I push up, you're gonna start seeing my hips come forward, which brings my shoulder forward, which brings my hand forward, which brings the racket into contact. So it looks like this. Just turning and making sure that when I'm swinging forward, that my hips, my shoulder, and my racket are aligned. A quick tip I like to have, or have kind of players visualize is that, imagine that there's a tube through your hip and through your shoulder, which matches the racket. And as I swing, I'm trying to keep those tubes in alignment, parallel. Big mistake, if you're swinging like this, my hip is back here, my racket's here, and my shoulder's here. They're not in alignment. When I swing and make contact here, notice how my racket's in this position, my hips are in this position, and my shoulder, they're all aligned. Now you might be saying, Kevin, but I see Roger Federer, and he's, he's whipping the ball with his hand. Correct, he's not choking off the last part of that kinetic chain, which is in his hand. As Roger swings, and a lot of pros you see swinging, their hand and wrist is very loose and relaxed, which creates lag. So as they swing with the kinetic chain using the legs, hips, and shoulder, 
and they start pulling the racket forward, the hand is relaxed enough to have lag, and then it comes forward into the racket. It's just like a bull whip. They're cracking the whip and allowing the racket to speed up and catch up to the contact. So as you go out, start really testing to see if you have the correct kinetic chain. An easy way of doing this is simply starting in this position and really focusing on shadowing a couple times where I'm just moving my hips, which moves my shoulder. The incorrect way of doing it is moving my hips, but having my shoulders not move. They're gonna move together. So the first stage is just moving together and finishing. Moving together and finishing. And for some of you advanced players that have a lot looser wrists and you're gonna have lag, you can still have the racket in the same position. And what's gonna happen is as I move, I'm gonna relax my racket, allowing it to lag into the ball. And you can see that even creates more topspin because I'm using my kinetic chain really efficiently. Okay, now we're gonna talk about what the ball should look like and why it should look that way. So, if you're watching the pros, you're gonna see the shape on the ball. And the main reason is, is because if you hit a heavy topspin ball, you want to have good margin over the net, as well as the ability to get the ball out of your opponent's strike zone. So first, let's talk about the first one, and that is what the ball should look like. So, if I am Looking at the court, I don't want my ball to be straight ahead like that. I want it to be able to go out of my opponent's strike zone, and I want to be able to have that height over the net so I'm not making a lot of errors. So the combination of that is going to be a little bit higher over the net, and that results in the ball going deeper in the court as well. So one of the drills that you can work on that uh, will help you with this is you can work on using the same acceleration that you would be on any other forehand heavy topspin shot and you want to work on varying the heights over the net. So that way if I'm playing an opponent who struggles with a high backhand, I'm going to be able to hit the ball 10 feet over the net high, heavy to the, uh, my opponent's backhand and it's going to jump out of their strike zone and they're going to have trouble hitting it back. So, if I want to work on this, one of the biggest things is getting the height. So I go down, and then I work on maybe that height. Then maybe the next one's a little lower. Then maybe the next one's a little lower. Now, as you can see, the acceleration is still the same. I'm still accelerating fast through the ball the same way that Ian and Kevin were talking about, using my kinetic chain and making sure my racket is under the ball but I'm making sure that the height and the margin over the net is very important and that it's not one inch over the net and landing right over the other side. So again, if I wanna start high, I can do this and the goal would be to get it in the court on the other side. Then I'm gonna go a little bit lower and a little bit lower. If you want to improve your forehand even more, you can click the link below or go to forehandactionplan.com and you're gonna be able to get a step-by-step -step plan from us to be able to really improve your forehand in your practice. Also, if you like this video, give us a like or comment below and make sure you subscribe for all 